This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Hello, I'm Pia. You're watching Kini News. Zahid has vowed that AMNO will take action against a party lawmaker who attended a Perikatan National event in Johor on Wednesday. AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said the party leadership will act against Rumbia State Assembly Person Muhammad Jailani Kamis, who attended a Perikatan National campaign event in Johor on Wednesday. Speaking to reporters last night, Zahid said he had been informed of the matter and it is being investigated. Sinar Haryan quoted Zaid as saying that he would be receiving a report and they would do something about it. Jailani won the Rumbia seat in 2018 on a PKR ticket but defected to AMNO in 2021 ahead of the Melaka Legislative Assembly elections. After being re-elected, he was appointed to the State Executive Council. However, he was removed from the council after Abdul Rauf Yusuf took over as Chief Minister in March this year. It was widely speculated that Jailani's relationship with Rauf had been strained prior to the change of chief minister. Before Rauf's appointment, Jailani foreshadowed the event by claiming that Malacca was about to receive a backdoor chief minister. As for his presence at the PN event, Jailani reportedly told the star that it did not mean he plans to leave AMNO. Defecting will likely violate Malaccan anti-hopping laws, which will require him to vacate his seat and trigger a by-election. Hamza Zainuddin has claimed that the freezing of his bank accounts was a desperate attempt by the government to pressure PN, which is gaining the public's trust. He said the act was a dirty tactic aimed at creating a bad perception of the coalition. Opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin has confirmed that the Inland Revenue Board has frozen bank accounts belonging to him and his wife since yesterday. In a statement, the Bersatu Secretary General said this is part of ongoing attempts by the federal government to pressure Perkatan National due to the coalition's expanding influence. Hamza claimed it is political prosecution and is a dirty tactic aimed to create a bad perception of PN, which won 146 out of the 245 state seats contested in the recent state polls. He added that it was similar to the case involving PN chairperson Moedin Yassin, who had four abuse of power charges against him linked to the Jana Wibawa program quashed by the Kuala Lumpur High Court earlier this month. Hamza also claimed that there will be political action taken against him and other PN leaders in days to come, including using the police to investigate him for criticizing DAP during campaigning for the state polls. However, he said the tyranny of the Pakatan Harapan BN government will not stop his fight. He said he will continue to fight for the sake of the people and the country's future. Anwar's political secretary has urged Hadi to stop spreading messages of hate and to be less prejudiced. Past President Abdul Hadi Awang has been urged to spread love, compassion and responsibility when addressing the Malay society. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's political secretary, Muhammad Kamil Abdul Munim, said Hadi must accept that there are different opinions in this world. In a statement, Kamil said that the past president's message is always clear, which is on hatred. He added that he hoped Hadi may be guided towards spreading the seeds of love, responsibility, be less prejudiced, and provide constructive criticism. Kamil was commenting on Hadi's latest writings where he claimed that Amno and Amana were now DAP's Gurkhas. In the article posted on Facebook, Hadi said that Amno and Amana were armed with fake Islamic branded weapons and were protecting the secularist DAP. Hadi also accused DAP of pursuing the Malaysian Malaysia concept which diminishes the supremacy of Malay Muslims and Bumiputra that he says are the owners of this land. Hadi claimed that the purpose of this was to provide foreigners equal treatment, similar to what the colonialists did in order to weaken the position of the Malays and Muslims. We are often faced with nutrient deficiency needed for our body. This is why I choose Jishur. Jishur is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink that helps to improve the immune system and strengthen our bodies. It has to be Good Morning Jishur. A BN leader has dismissed Sanusi's claim that Perikatan National's wave will hit Johor. AMNO Supreme Council member No Jaslan Muhammad has dismissed claims that the upcoming by-elections in Johor will allow for the Perikatan National wave to spread in the state. In a press conference yesterday, 
Nur Jastran said this is as PN did not have support in Johor. According to Nur Jastran, the people of Johor are not swayed by individuals with an extreme personality like Kedah Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Matnur. He said the Malays in Johor are more objective when it comes to matters that touch on religion and race. He added that this was why PN's rhetoric on such issues would not convince the voters to support them in the Pulai and Simpang Jerambai elections. Nur Jaslan, who is BN's Pulai chief, also dismissed PN chairperson Moedin Yassin's claim that the coalition could win by getting 90% of the support from Malay voters in Pulai. Instead, he said he was confident that Harapan BN's majority in the two seats would increase. The Pulai parliamentary and Simpang Jeram state seats fell vacant following the death of its incumbent, Amanah Deputy President Salahuddin Ayub. The by-elections will take place on September 9th with nominations tomorrow. The IGP has confirmed that Muhyiddin Yassin's son-in-law and a lawyer have been placed on Interpol's red notice. The two individuals are wanted by the MACC. PN Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin's son-in-law Muhammad Adlan Berhan and lawyer Mansour Sa'ad, who are wanted by the MACC, have been placed on the Interpol's red notice list. According to Utusan Malaysia, this was confirmed by Inspector General of Police Razaruddin Hussein. The MACC had claimed that the two individuals were wanted over a project involving registering and storing biometric information for foreign workers and had left the country in May. Previously, Muhammad Adlan, through his lawyers, had released a statement claiming that he was the victim of a witch hunt and suffered severe damage to his reputation after the MACC publicly accused him of being on the run. He also claimed that both his personal and company bank accounts have been frozen without notice. Meanwhile, Mansour claimed that he was a victim of collateral damage due to political persecution. Mansour added that a press statement by the MACC on August 8th was an attempt to smear his reputation. He also threatened to sue the MACC for abuse of power. Najib has failed in his bid to stay his 2.28 billion ringgit 1MDB trial. The Court of Appeal ruled today that the case will go on before the Kuala Lumpur High Court next week. The Court of Appeal this morning denied Najib Abdul Razak's application to stay his 1MDB corruption trial. The trial will still go on before the Kuala Lumpur High Court next week. Najib had applied for a stay of trial pending disposal of his appeal to recuse Judge Colin Lawrence Sequeira from presiding over the trial. In a unanimous decision today, the three-person bench chaired by Haidaira Said Ismail ruled that there are no special circumstances that justify a stay on the 1MDB trial. Haidaira said that they did not agree that the appeal to recuse Sequeira will be rendered pointless if the trial is to proceed before the High Court next week. The judge added, that it is in the public interest for the trial to proceed, and that the trial is at an advanced stage with 173 days of trial since it first began in 2019. When met by the media after proceedings, Najib's lead defense counsel, Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, said he was instructed by Najib to file a fresh application at the federal court to stay the 1MDB trial. Previously, on August 18th, Sequeira had dismissed Najib's bid to recuse him from the trial on grounds that he used to be partners with the recently arrested 1MDB linked former fugitive, Jasmine Liu, in a law firm 15 years ago. He ruled that past employment is not enough to show a real danger of bias, as there was no contact between him and Liu since she left the law firm Zain & Co. in 2008. The judge pointed out that there has been no communication, either personal or professional, between him and Liu since 2008, with Lu having been engaged as general counsel with 1MDB in 2011. He also pointed out that the defense team failed to prove any direct and monetary relationship between them. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news update. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Pia. Thanks for watching.